Greetings everyone, welcome back to Bob of All Trades. This right here is the 2021 HP Omen, and I got to spec this the way that I would want to if I were buying this for myself. So it's a 4.6 pound chassis, not a whole lot has changed on it. In fact, only one thing has changed on it. We'll cover that here in a hot second, but it does feature the Ryzen 7 5800H, a 100 watt 3060. Doesn't seem to be any dynamic boost here. It just pulls 100 watts, really nice. And from a performance comparison standpoint, it performs basically neck and neck with the 80 watt 2070 Super that I have here. And we will demonstrate some of that as well so you can kind of see the difference. What else does it have? So 16 gigabytes in dual channel, very accessible. Wi-Fi 6, a 70 watt hour battery on this Optimus only equipped laptop. There's no multiplexer switch, no muck switch on here. You're getting about four to six hours unplugged, right? I mean, you can probably do a few things to get more out of it, but just plug and play normal everyday use four to six hours with typically closer to the six, but I did have a few where it was four and I was hammering on this. What else about it? Two M.2 slots. This one came with half a terabyte. So you do have an extra slot available to add storage later on. Pretty nice. And the 144 Hertz panel at 98% standard RGB at around 300 nits, maybe just a little bit more. Good display, 144 Hertz. I think it is appropriately equipped for the parts that are inside. Now, don't get me wrong. If you could find one with a 240 Hertz or a 300 Hertz display and that difference is only 100 or maybe $50, perhaps you go for it. But if my money were on the line here, this is how I would certainly spec this device as a, a gaming type enthusiast who's even more so an enthusiast of saving money. The 4.6 pound chassis, just like last year, plastic top with the aluminum deck. Now, many were concerned about the flex of the display, and HP put these little uh, hard rubber tabs along the side to sort of lessen the amount of flex. I'm not too sure, though, if the flex in the lid itself can be labeled as an issue at this point, because this chassis's only been around for about a year, and when there's failing parts on a laptop, I am known about it quickly, whether it's from the wonderful comment section or through email, you name it. I'm on the forums. When things go south, I tend to be notified of it pretty quickly. This chassis's only been out, the design of it, for about a year now. So I'm not seeing anything yet. But HP, to, to, to please many of the, um, the vocal individuals out there that had expressed concern about this, did add this tool on the side. Good on them for that. Otherwise, the laptop is pretty much the same. A lot of people like this keyboard because it has nearly an identical layout to like a 10 keyless design that you would see on a traditional desktop type keyboard. Overall, the typing is good, the spacing is good, the keys feel good. There's nothing to really brag about here, but it also doesn't suck. It's a nice keyboard solution. The trackpad, decent size, it's plastic, which is a bummer. It does work. I have expressed to HP before that I would love a glass trackpad here and their response was well this is a gaming laptop we'll put glass trackpads in their higher end units they're not wrong about that but as somebody who will daily drive at arrow i would probably prefer to daily drive maybe something like this and if it had a glass trackpad that would be great just just something to further think about hp i, I know it costs more to do that but in the grand scheme of things, they're, they're probably not wrong either, as most people are just going to plug in a mouse anyway as a gaming laptop. But it does feature Ryzen. You have a 70-watt-hour battery. You're getting some pretty decent battery life. People are going to use the trackpad. Again, it's not bad, but, I mean, a glass one would make it perfect. So port selection, not quite as good as Intel lacking Thunderbolt 3. But on the left-hand side, we have the barrel power port, the local area network, a single USB-A, HDMI 2.0, the audio combo port, and a ultra high speed one card reader. And over on the right hand side, we have the USB-C that will do data. We have the mini display port and two more USB-A's. Overall, build quality here, just like it was before. I have been using the Intel version right here for, it's gotta be getting close to a year now, maybe even a little bit more. I'd have to look back to see when I had reviewed this and then tack on about a month or two worth of time before I actually produced the review. That one's heavier too, it's got the OLED, you can really feel it. So 4.6 pounds here. I haven't had any durability issues, any, any really, anything that was alarming. And if I did, I would love to make a video about it. So 
I feel like at this point, I feel good about the experience that I've had using the Intel version as far as longevity, use, hinge, and things like that. And, and hopefully that will carry over nicely for you on what will no doubt be the more popular Ryzen version. And the 3060 here just doesn't disappoint. I mean, take a look at some of the benchmarks here. We have, you know, Cinebench. We can work with Firestrike, Time Spy. Compare that to what a 2070 Super at around 80 watts is going to do. And you're going to see some pretty similar performance numbers. Within margin of you not being able to tell in reality unless you're looking at benchmarks. But if you're just gaming, the overall feel and experience there is going to be very, very similar. Now, when it comes to just gaming in general, expectation around an 80 watt 2070 super. Okay, great. What about thermals? All right. So I have reviewed four Ryzen 5000 series laptops at this point, two 5900HS models, and then two 5800H models, with this being the second 5800H. Thermal's pretty normal to get up around that 90 to 95C from what I have seen so far. That's in when, when you're hammering on this thing, right? When you're going postal and you're playing titles like Battlefield 5 online that work the GPU, the CPU, the heat transfer is real. Everything is just getting blasted. You may see that get up to around 90 with a few rare occasions of 94 and 95 degrees Celsius where it begins to throttle. But normally, just like Overwatch, for example, it's in the 80s. The GPU, I think I've seen it hit 70 degrees Celsius a couple of times. I have dozens of hours worth of gaming in this, and normally it's around 68, 69 degrees with several hour game sessions at a time to really get a feel for what this is like to use. What kind of thermal expectations can we have? Now, my ambient temperature here is a little cooler. You're looking at 68 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, which is what, maybe right around 21 degrees Celsius. Okay, so it is a little bit cooler. When it comes to wattage management, however, of the four Ryzen laptops that I have featured, they have wattage sliders, two Asus models and the Electronics Mech G3. There's nothing here that we can do to adjust wattage in lower wattage of the GPU or CPU. And perhaps maybe you can address that in third party software, maybe use the voltage curve editor to tweak the GPU, that's fine. But there's nothing here built into the software that allows that level of adjustability. I bring this up because this particular SKU with the 3060, I personally don't really think it needs that level of adjustability. Not like the other three laptops featuring Ryzen would absolutely have to have that level of adjustability because they ran hot very quickly. This device, stock thermal pace, took a very long time for me to get it to hit that thermal throttle threshold, and I really don't even have much evidence of it happening. So for this device to run as cool as it does with the spec that I have spec'd it out at to not really need that level of adjustability, I think is nice. Do I want it? Yes. Is it necessary? In my opinion, no. And I have to give them a thumbs up on that because while the enthusiast side of me and the enthusiast side of you that comes to Bob of all trades because you appreciate that angle and that approach that I bring to the laptop life community, it is important to note that this device, while lacking wattage adjustability, in my opinion, just does not need it. And I think that's pretty cool, pun intended. But what's not cool is just how hot the 200 watt power supply will get. After a two, maybe three hour game run, that power supply got up to over 60 degrees Celsius to the touch. Now I have this resting on carpet. Many 200 watt gaming laptop HP solutions that I have featured, the power supply does get very warm and I just wanted to bring this to your attention. Do I think it is a problem? No, I don't. I've seen power supplies exceed their rated wattage for hours at a time. This one isn't necessarily exceeding it, but it does get warm and I have yet to cause damage. I have yet to break one of these. I have yet set fire to my carpet and I'm essentially trying to do that stuff and everything is okay. Now, when you are running the device that hard for a long period of time, you will see the battery drain. There's a toggle in the BIOS that has this adaptive, adaptive dynamic battery thingamajiggy. It's essentially there to 
put a drain on the battery so it's not constantly being at a state of overcharge. When you are using your Omen laptop, and I've seen many people talk about this before, they are concerned that the battery drains while gaming. It took about three hours for it to bottom out at around 51 to 53%. It was about 51% was as low as I could make it. And then I were to alt tab out, I took a picture of where that was at and was already climbing back up to 52 and 53%. And I went to further testing, just letting this sit here at a game load for six hours and it never went below that 51 to 53 percent and then as soon as you take it off the gaming load it starts charging back up immediately and it's just a, a clever way for them to kind of mitigate um, premature battery failure I think it's cool it is what it is uh, speaking of cool the keyboard temperatures at the most obnoxious gaming load are some of the best that I have featured on the channel in quite some time so legendary comforts under ridiculous gaming loads. That is awesome. I like everything about this, but when it comes to, let's say, the bang and loops and speaker audio, remember it's a gaming laptop. While it may sound okay and it will pass the latency mod real-time audio for you music creation enthusiasts out there in a five-minute run, pushing it up to 13 minutes and it did fail because the NVIDIA driver kicked in and it kind of screwed things up. And there's no way to run this off of the integrated GPU to bypass that solution. So it is something that the music making enthusiast would have to tweak to make that better suit that individual. And the fan noise with this laptop at maximum fan speed runs at about 62 decibels. Now, before you have a fecal hemorrhage, please understand that gaming laptops at load typically run between 55 and 62 decibels. And while as you increase 10 decibels at a time, that's twice as loud as the previous 10 decibels, you're going to want to wear headphones on any gaming laptop that's at load at around 42 to 44 decibels and beyond anyway, because it just gets really obnoxious unless you have headphones on. So I don't have a problem with a fan noise at 55 decibels, and I don't have a problem with it at 62 decibels, because in both of those, I'm going to wear headphones, and I would recommend that you do as well. There's really not a whole lot of specific fan control when it comes to tunability and creating a curve, but you can max it out, you can let it run at auto, and there is a manual slider where you can set it to a fixed fan speed. Doing so may be very beneficial for you under certain circumstances and certain titles. That is for you to explore because there's a million different variations, but just know that it is there. Maybe you cap your frame rate to 60 and you're playing Fortnite and then you run the wattage or the, the fan slider to like 25%. Well, now you're going to have a laptop that is essentially at like 38 decibels running cool and quiet and everything is just hunky dory, right? You see what I'm saying here? Pretty awesome at that point. But all in all, this is a very nice laptop. HP has some of the most competitive pricing out there. Check the links in the description below, and then they often have sales on top of that. I'm seeing prices on a 3060 HP Omen with only 8 gigabytes of RAM and 144 hertz panel with the Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 5000 series CPUs for like $1,100. That is a really, really good price. And as you spec it into somewhere around this territory, it gets a little bit higher, but it's still very competitive. It's a very powerful device. It's quite capable. And it doesn't have any glaring weak links or anything that I could ultimately say is a huge red flag. Even as hot as this power supply got, I've been dealing with stuff like this on laptops for many years, and I have yet to see it be an issue. Would we like all things to run cooler? Would we all like things to run quieter? Yes, of course. But in the grand scheme of everything, this, in my opinion, is a very compelling device at its asking price. Check the links in the description below. That's it. Hopefully you enjoyed this review. I'm Bob of All Trades, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.